right, welcome to part two of our discussion of equations of lines and planes in space to go along with section 2.5 of the OpenStax Calculus Volume 3 textbook. In this one, we're going to look at finding the equation of a plane, the distance between a point and a plane, and the line and angle formed by two intersecting planes. Now, there's a bunch of ways we can define a plane in three dimensions. Uh, there's five listed here, right? We could have a point in a normal vector, a point in two vectors, three points, one point in a line, and two lines. Um, in any case, we're going to end up with a scalar equation of a plane that looks kind of like this, where x, y, and z are normal rectangular coordinate variables. Uh, a, B, C, numbers multiplied outside, those are the components of a normal vector, right? Which is the vector that's normal to everything in the plane at a right angle to it. Uh, and then P, uh, X naught, Y naught, Z naught, those are just the coordinates of some point. Now you can get any normal vector, so it just has to be in this direction. It could be any length and you could use any point. And so the the plane equation could look a little different uh, and still be equivalent as long as you use the correct point and normal vector. So if we're given the point and the normal vector, we would set this up. Uh, if we had two vectors in the plane along with a point in the plane, we could do it. Three points in the plane would also work. Uh, a point in the plane and then a line that's inside the plane or two lines inside the plane. Uh, now, you might want to take a minute to write down the scalar equation of a plane here in terms of the point and the normal vector for this next problem. Let's see if you can get the equation of a plane that has a uh, point with coordinates negative 5, 1, 0, and normal vector with components 1, negative 2, 3. So we should have found that the correct answer is B. Uh, you notice that these coordinates here end up being subtracted inside parentheses. Of course, the zero is not there. And then the components of the vector are multiplied on the outside. So the answer is B. So here we'll look at how we can take that given information in the five cases and end up with the equation of a plane. Now, the first case is almost trivial. If we have the normal vector and the point, then we have all the unknown we, unknowns we need, right? There's just six missing numbers, A, B, C, X naught, Y naught, Z naught. So we just put those in. Of course, X, Y, and Z stay as variables. The second case is that we're given two vectors in the plane and then one of the points in the plane. Uh, well, we would just take the two vectors and find their cross product, and that would be normal to the plane by definition of the cross product being normal to the two vectors that you are cross producting. Uh, so that would give us a normal vector. And then of course we're given a point. So now we're back in the same as case one. In case two, we're given three points. We'll call them P, Q, and R. And what we can do is form two vectors in the plane. So form a vector from P to Q, form a vector from Q to R. Then the cross product of those two vectors gives us a normal vector and use any one of the three points uh, with that normal vector to get your equation of your plane. But no matter what, you're trying to get a normal vector and then the coordinates of one of the points. All right, now if you look at this uh, third, or sorry, fourth case, we're trying to, we're given the a point and a line, and that goes along with this. Uh, so here's the equation of the line, and it's a symmetric equation, and then the equation of the point. Uh, and of course, the point P is used, um, but what you want to do is remember that the coordinates here, those are the coordinates of the vector in the direction of the line. And so that's really right here. That's U. So the second vector is just U, the direction, the vector in the direction of the line. And then uh, Q, we can let Q be this point here, x1, y1, z1. So we'll find a vector from P to Q, uh, and then that's one vector. And then we'll use the other vector that was given by the line. Uh, and then those are both vectors in the plane. Uh, and then we're back to uh, case three of having two vectors. And uh, we find the cross product to get the normal and then use the point that we have and we can get the equation.
function of the plane. Uh, the last case is where you have two lines. So that's, that's this. Uh, and remember that the denominators are the components of a vector. So that's the vector v. And this would be the vector u. So you are when you're given two lines, you're technically given two vectors. So find their cross product, and you get your normal vector. Uh, you're also given two points, and so you can use uh, this as the coordinates of the point that you need to get p. Uh, point and normal vector, and you're done. So you need a point and normal vector no matter what, and it's just a question of how do you get that from the given information. So we'll break this down more in the methodology, which will show you how to get that equation uh, in all five cases. So uh, we'll find a point on the plane, determine one vector, determine a second vector, calculate the normal vector, uh, and then use the normal vector and the point to write the equation, and then we'll validate. So see that in the methodology document. All right, we also wanted to look at the distance from a point to a plane. And we saw the distance from a point to a line, uh, and then this is uh, a similar approach. So we've got some plane here, and it's got points Q, R, it's got a normal vector N, right? So that defines the plane. Uh, and then we've got some point P that's not on the plane. So from the plane equation, you can grab any point Q, uh, you should have the normal vector, and then you'll be given some point that's not on the plane and you wanna find the distance. Um, now the straight line distance from the point to the plane is shown here as the vector from R to P. But of course, we don't know where R is, right? That's the closest point on the plane to P. Um, and so what we want to do is find the vector that goes from Q to P, which we can do, and then do the dot product of that with the normal vector. Uh, and, and then divide by the magnitude of the normal vector. Uh, and using the properties of the dot product, um, this will give you the magnitude of this other vector. Because, of course, we take QP and we dot it with N. That should give us the magnitude of P times the magnitude of n times the cosine of the angle between them. And if we divide by the magnitude of n, uh, well, then the magnitude of n would disappear from this. And so what we have left is the magnitude of qp times the cosine of theta. Of course, theta is this angle here. Uh, and qp times cosine of theta is actually this, right? Uh, you would normally see it drawn over here, but it's the same vector. So R. So uh, hypotenuse times cosine of the angle gives you that uh, adjacent side of the triangle, right? So thinking of that as your triangle. Now, if you have parallel planes, um, you would look at their equations and you should see that the normal vectors are going to all match up. So remember, the normal vector components are the ones multiplied with the variables. So consider these two plane equations. They have normal vector 2, 1, negative 1, uh, you know, normal vector with components 2, 1, negative 1. Um, but they could have some other constant here or in parentheses some other constant because they'd have different points. Uh, if these numbers were the same, it'd be the exact same plane. So the parallel planes will have um, the same normal vectors. Uh, now you could take that distance formula we just saw, and you could use it to find the distance between two planes. Just think of one plane as the plane, and then think of the other plane as the point. The distance between those. Oh, well, I already mentioned that parallel planes have parallel normal vectors, but if you bring along a non-parallel plane, um, and you have the two planes that are not parallel, then they'll intersect and it will form a line. 
So we see here a, a, a plane R uh, intersecting with parallel planes P and Q. And in both cases, you get an equation, or you get a line of intersection. So the important thing is that if you have non-parallel planes, they won't intersect at a point, they'll intersect along a line. Uh, of course, this means that the normal vectors are not parallel. And we might be interested in finding the equation of that line as well as the angle uh, between the two planes. So to get the line of intersection, we just take the two equations and we solve them as a, a system of linear equations. Um, now, you technically, if you have three variables, you would need three equations to solve and get a single solution. Um, but we know we're not getting a single solution, we're getting a line. So you can see here that uh, you could use sort of the addition or elimination method by adding the two equations, you can eliminate one variable. This relates uh, x to z. Uh, then you can go back and substitute that in and get a connection between y and z. Uh, and then you can just let one of the variables be the parameter t, uh, and you get yourself the parametric equations for a line. So. Again, when you take two non-parallel planes, you're going to get a line of intersection. And so you just kind of solve like this and get the parametric equations of that line. If you want the angle of intersection, well, then you would just use the normal vectors of those two planes. Um, and this just goes back to the dot product of two vectors uh, being related to the angle between them. Now, this is just the dot product formula for the cosine of the angle between two vectors, um, but they're just normal vectors. And so uh, here the uh, angle between these two vectors is going to be the same as the angle between the two planes themselves. All right, and that's it for now. Uh, again, this presentation by Matthew Watts uh, contains images and text from the OpenStax textbook Calculus Volume 3 by Jed Herman and G. Strange. CC by NCSA.